Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, really excited. I know we're all excited and lucky to have Michelle Norris today. She is an expert in nutrition. Uh, nutrition. You should uh, see her somewhere on your screen. Um, I had the great opportunity to hear her speak probably about a month ago um, at a top advisor conference. And it was one of the most, and I've heard several nutrition type of health um, webinars like this, but this was the most easy to understand, um, talking about how to read labels, very practical advice that I felt I could immediately use. Um, shared it with my dad, we talked about it, and I was like, you know, clients I think would really enjoy this because it's not overwhelming. Um, and I know with COVID, um, so many of us have been staying at home and therefore eating at home. Um, so we're all hungry for this type of information. And again, Michelle did a, does a great job of making it uh, very easily digestible. Um, see, see what I did there? Um, hopefully I got a couple of smiles. Um, but also um, we're gonna have Q&A at the end. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see a question or Q&A button. Feel free to type in your questions. Let's, we'll let Michelle get through her slide deck. It won't take too long. It'll be good information. She'll probably answer some of those questions, but then uh, me and my partners, Tim and Chris, who you should see as well, um, they, the three of us will help kind of field those questions to Michelle and do our best to get those answered. We'll also have this recorded and send it out to all of you as well. So now I'm going to let uh, Chris and Tim say a few words. Hi, everybody. Uh, Tim Freeze here in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I am coming to you from the perspective on this topic as the grocery cart pusher behind my wife who slowly goes down the aisles reading all the labels and me questioning the amount of time I'm spending in the grocery store. And, um, and so now I wanna empower myself, understand a little bit more about what's going on so that maybe she can push the grocery cart for a little while. Um, but in all, in all seriousness, you know, this is a, an awesome, exciting opportunity to, to really continue our path towards true wealth as we talk with our clients and frame finances in our lives as a very important part of our lives. But this is, this is really a core quadrant that we talk about in health and taking care of ourselves and what we put into our bodies. And so I'm just excited to hear what Michelle has to talk about and learn and take lots of notes and, and Hopefully for the folks that aren't on the call, we'll be able to share um, on our websites and a, and a re recap of the video. And I'm just glad that Michelle is here to share all of her experience and knowledge. Chris? Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Your wife and my wife should shop in the same store, apparently the same amount of time, because she's <laughs> very literate in label reading as well. So uh, I appreciate that. It's great to have Michelle. Great to be with you all. Great to bring this topic to you as well. I hope you have an appetite for it because I know we are starved for this kind of information. So I want to really get forward with this. Uh, exactly. I just want to make sure you all get some levity. This is well. one thing we always do is we always go big. It's beginning gratitude. So I want to make sure everybody takes 30 seconds here to think about something over the last 90 days that you're grateful for. I'm going to be silent during this. I'll share mine and then we'll move on to Michelle. So take about 30 seconds to take a minute and reflect about something you're really grateful for over the last 90 days. All right, I'll show you mine very quickly. It's family, friends, uh, and then the spring coming here in Wisconsin, in back one Wisconsin, which is great. Uh, we appreciate that. I hope all you have yours as well. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to David if you want to introduce Michelle. Yeah, um, uh, Michelle, you can go ahead and give your presentation. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in, in nutrition and kind of your why. Um, be interesting to hear and then we'll let you uh, take over. Yeah, thank you guys so much, Tim and Chris. I hope that by the end of this presentation, you also are literate in nutrition label reading. That is the goal. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I want to share my screen. You guys shout at me if this, for whatever reason, doesn't work. Hopefully that's good. I'll make you guys go away. Everybody good? See that? Hopefully. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to give you a little bit about my why. This is a pretty personal thing for me, a pretty personal topic, and it came about um, in a way that was very, very organic. So I grew up as a diver, a springboard and platform diver, and I went on to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to dive. Uh, my sophomore year, I had a career-ending back injury. I herniated a disc in my back for the third time, and the sports med staff told me that if I wanted to pick up my kids in 10 years, that I should probably consider hanging it up. And that was one of the toughest decisions I ever had to make in my whole life. Um, for 10 years, a decade, I identified as Michelle I'm a diver, Michelle I'm a diver at Carolina. Uh, it was my everything. It was what took up all my time. And overnight that ended. And so not only was I uh, in a lot of pain, I couldn't bend over, couldn't tie my shoes, couldn't shave my legs. Uh, I needed to heal my back, obviously, but I also needed to fill my time before I ended up in trouble or failing out of school or something because practice and weights and study hall and travel and all that took up every waking second. Uh, and so I was seeing doctor after doctor, they couldn't put me back together. They all told me I needed surgery or bed rest. And when you're 20 years old, neither one of those things sound very enticing. Um, however, my strength and conditioning coach at the time, he was super holistic and he gave me a third option. He said, uh, how about this? Why don't we come at this from a different angle? We'll pull the inflammatory foods out of your diet. We'll change your diet to include more natural anti-inflammatory foods. We'll feed you nine fish oil pills a day. You can keep coming in the weight room and keep strength training. We'll change it up a little bit. We'll do contrast fast. We'll go see this chiropractor. We'll do some soft tissue work on you. And let's just see what we can do with that. And in about six months, I was fully healed. It was incredible. And it was this light bulb moment for me that was like, oh my gosh, none of this was presented to me through the traditional medical model. I had no idea about my lifestyle choices and how they could impact the inflammation in my body, the inflammation specifically in my back. So I was an exercise and sports science major anyways, and I went on to get a nutrition coaching certification and have used that to try and reach as many people as possible to teach them about the power of the fork and how every day, three times a day, or however many times a day you eat, you have an opportunity to do something great for your body, promote health or you have an opportunity to do something pretty negative or detrimental to your health and I think we need to start looking at food in a different way food is fuel it's not something that um, we should just make mindless choices about or make choices that uh, make us feel good in that moment we need to think about the long-term consequences of the food that we're choosing all right, that's my spiel, that's my why. Let's get into um, the slides here. The very first one, I love this quote. I love to start with it. Thomas Edison, the light bulb guy. So a little bit outside of his realm when he said this back in 1902, but he said, the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but will rather cure and prevent disease with nutrition. And that's exactly what I found out firsthand and what I have found out through coaching for the last 10 years, helping people make better nutrition choices and watching what comes of that. It's been absolutely incredible. We can truly cure and prevent disease with our food choices. So before we get into all the facts and figures and lessons that I have for you today, I wanna show you what's going on in America. I think we all understand pretty well the obesity epidemic, but I wanna visualize it for you. So we're gonna look at a map of the United States. These are uh, straight off the CDC website. So I didn't come up with these. You can find these yourself. We're gonna look at a map of obesity rates of, of the United States of obesity rates starting in 1985 and we'll go through 2010 year by year. So back in 1985, we didn't have any information on the white states. Light blue states, we had less than 10% of people were obese. And then a little bit darker blue, we've got 10 to 14% of people are obese. All right, I'm gonna flip through these pretty quick. 87, 88, 89, 90, 91. We've got 15 to 19% of people in those darker blue states. You'll notice the Southeast and West Virginia tends to lead the way. 92, 93, 94, there you go, 95, 6, 7, we get another new category, greater than 20% of people obese in those tan states, 99, 2000, 2001, Mississippi, every time, greater than 25% of people obese, 2003, 4, 5, another new category, Mississippi, Louisiana, West Virginia, 2006, 7, Eight, we get another new category, 2009, 2010. 
And that was 11 years ago. So if we actually fast forward to today, I wish I could show you 11 more slides where we trend back to where the country's all blue and only 15 to 19% of people are struggling with their weight. But today we've got 35% of the entire country classified as obese, 34% of the country classified as overweight. And that's only leaving 31% of people in America classified as a healthy weight. So we're really, really struggling and we need to do something about it. Why is this? We've got four major reasons of why we have this obesity epidemic going on. We've got the processed food industry for one. So think about every convenience store, every aisle in the grocery store, even the checkout aisles at places like Best Buy or Marshalls, they're lined with processed foods. And a lot of times, unfortunately, they're eye level with our kids. Um, and the reason we, the second reason, increased sugar consumption, that's due to the processed foods industry. So those foods that are made in a factory, come in a bag or a box, they wouldn't taste very good if it weren't for all the sugar that's added to them. And the reason those food companies add all that sugar is because sugar is addictive. It's a drug. It lights up the same receptors in your brain as a stimulant drug would. And so they want your money. So they want you to keep coming back. That's why they dump the sugar in. Third, we've got incorrect dietary guidelines. So if you go to choosemyplate.gov, that's where the government is recommending to us what we should eat. They're behind on what the nutrition, the latest nutrition research is telling us. You can go on there and they'll still tell you that you need to buy low fat products when really we've figured out that fat is a necessity. We need fat to function. They'll tell you that fortified breads and grains and cereals and tortillas are all good sources of healthy carbs. And that's not true. Those are actually promoting inflammation in our body. And then lastly, especially here, I'm here in North Carolina in the South, we've got major portion size problems, especially when you go out to eat, you get a meal that is way too much food. If you're like me, you have no self-control and you eat it all anyways. A uh, little pro tip, when you get your food, when you go out to eat and you know that it's too much food, go ahead and get it to go box, right? When it comes out, box up a little bit. Maybe you'll have a whole second meal to take with you when you leave. Maybe it'll be a snack for later something like that, but then you're less tempted to eat everything that's on your plate. All right, let's get into the simple truths. So we're going to dissect each one of these on the coming slides, but real quick, we've got fats don't make you fat. Uh, many people have probably heard about the ketogenic diet. That's where you eat where about 70% of your calories actually come from healthy fats. 20% from protein and the rest from carbs, 20, 25% from protein. Um, but we've realized we absolutely need fat. It's really good for our brain health and it's our body's preferred source of fuel. Carbohydrates should be complex. We'll talk about what is a complex carb and where can we find them in what foods. Added sugar is a major problem. And then we'll quickly touch on some of the preservatives that are found in our processed foods. First, let's talk about fat. This is the only slide I promise where I get into the biology of the body, but think back to your eighth grade biology class, picture this cell, this, you're looking at a picture of a cell, all those little red circles, that's the outside of a cell, it's called a phospholipid bilayer, lipid is another word for fat, all right, so every single one of your cells, your body's made up of trillions of them, has around the outside of it a fence. All right, this phospholipid bilayer equals fence. Think about that, okay? It controls what goes in the cell and what comes out of the cell. You can imagine that's a pretty important job, right? It's protecting the cell from things that shouldn't be able to get in and keeping things in that shouldn't be able to get out. So we need healthy phospholipid bilayers. The way that our body builds these phospholipid bilayers is by consuming healthy fats, all right? So we need to eat healthy fats. Our body takes those healthy fats and turns them into phospholipid bilayers. The issue comes is when we're consuming too many unhealthy fats and unhealthy fats are things that are found in processed foods like um, corn oil, soybean oil, vegetable oil, um, canola oil. Those are all inflammatory oils that you might not have in your pantry, but if you start to read nutrition labels, you'll notice they'll come up a lot more frequently than you realize. We're actually at, on average, Americans are consuming 10% of their calories from soybean oil. And if we were all in a room right now, I might ask you guys, anybody raise your hand if you have soybean oil in your pantry. And I bet not a single hand would go up. And you'd be like, how am I getting 10% of my calories from soybean oil if I've never even heard of it and don't cook with it? Well, the reason is um, most restaurants actually cook with it because it's a really cheap, stable oil. And also it's found in many, many, many of our processed foods. All right. So we're getting 10% of our calories from the soybean oil. Our body doesn't really recognize the difference between a healthy fat and an unhealthy fat. It makes our phospholipid bilayers regardless. 
Okay, so it takes that fat. And if we're pulling all of our fat sources from those unhealthy oils, that's like trying to build a house out of foam bricks. All right, so you might have this cell that looks like a cell and, it's, and hopefully it's gonna function like one, but once it, when it comes down to it, that's a foam gate, foam fence around the outside of your cell that's not gonna function properly. So you're setting yourself up for, for disease from a cellular level when we continue to consume these unhealthy inflammatory fats. So where should we get our fats from? Um, these are all sources of healthy fat, all right? Avocado is a huge one. Coconut anything, coconut oil, coconut manna, coconut flakes, coconut butter, all great. Before this call, we were talking about morning smoothies. And if you guys are a smoothie person, coconut oils is a great way to sneak in, uh, throw that in your smoothie and that's a great way to sneak in some healthy fats. Grass-fed butter or ghee, for those who are not familiar with ghee, that's clarified butter. So it's butter that's been melted down. They skim the milk proteins that come to the top. They skim those off. And what's left is clarified butter or ghee. For someone like myself, I don't do any dairy products, but I can have ghee and that's an easy substitute for butter. Full fat yogurt, the full fat kind, buy the full fat kind, okay? Uh, nuts, grass-fed beef. So for a long time, we thought beef, red meat equals heart disease, high cholesterol. They've proven that that is not true at all. We just need to make sure we're getting good quality red meat. So we want to look for the words grass fed, all right? hundred percent grass fed. Sometimes they'll trick you and they'll put on their grass finished. That means those cows ate a few sprigs of grass right before they were sent to the slaughterhouse. All right. They probably had a diet of corn and soybeans their whole life. And then the day before they went to the slaughterhouse, they let them eat a little bit of grass so they could put grass finished on the label. Don't get duped by that. Good quality bacon. Again, another food that's been demonized for a long time. If we're buying bacon that doesn't have any added sugar or nitrates in it, that is an okay source of healthy fat. Full fat sour cream, cheese, guacamole, nut butter, and unsweetened nut milks, all kinds out there, coconut, almond, cashew. All right, so make sure we're incorporating these into our diet every single day. Number two, carbohydrates should be complex. So let's talk about what is a complex carb. The difference between a simple carb and a complex carb is how it breaks down in your body. A simple carb is gonna break down very quickly. It's gonna create a spike in your blood sugar and then you'll have a crash. And that, that's, that's no good, we'll get into that in a second. Versus a complex carb, it keeps your blood sugar pretty stable and gives you more long lasting energy. So look at the, the graph on your bottom right corner of your screen. We've got two individuals and they monitor their blood sugar after consuming two different kinds of meals. The red line is somebody who just had a high carb, low fat meal. So maybe they had some macaroni and cheese and an orange juice. All right, all that's gonna break down just like sugar in their body, the regular noodles and the orange juice. Unfortunately, orange juice is the same as drinking a soda. So we have a huge spike in the blood sugar. And then about 240 minutes after that meal, we have this crash, all right? So there, um, we're cranky, we're craving more carbohydrates. We have that 2.30 feeling and we do this roller coaster again. Maybe we reach for some goldfish and a, a nut or butter, I don't know, some kind of snack of Nutella and go. And then we send our blood sugar right back up and we do this all day long. A lot of times, many Americans will spike their blood sugar three, four, five, six, seven times a day. And what the latest research is showing us about longevity, so living a long life, but having a good quality of life in those later years is that the fewer times in your life you spike your blood sugar, the longer you live. All right, that's really, really, really important. The fewer times in your life you send your blood sugar on this roller coaster ride with simple carbohydrates, the longer you live. So every time we reach for something super sugary or something that's gonna break down like sugar in our body, white bread, wheat bread, white pasta, wheat pasta, anything with sugar, cookies, crackers, chips, that's gonna send our blood sugar up. We're taking time off our life. So not to say that you can't ever have these things again, but you should think about them in a different way. Is it worth it? All right, versus somebody with the green line, that blood sugar that stayed nice and steady, maybe they just had a steak and broccoli and a sweet potato. All right, so a sweet potato being a complex carb, it's gonna break down slowly. It's not gonna spike your blood sugar. That's where we wanna live right there in a nice low blood sugar as consistently as possible. Other complex carbs that aren't gonna spike your blood sugar, brown rice, brown rice pasta, quinoa, beans, sweet potatoes, squash, green vegetables, all of those are good sources of complex carbohydrates. Added sugar is a major 
problem, all right? The average American currently is consuming 90 grams of added sugar every day. Compare that to what the World Health Organization recommends, which is 25 grams, and we're not doing so great. And the reason is the processed foods industry, it hides sugar in everything, all right? Even one serving of ketchup is four grams of added sugar, all right? If you're like me, you certainly don't use one serving, right? So in just my ketchup alone, I might be getting eight grams of sugar, whether that be every day, every other day, but it's hidden in everything. So we need to start paying attention to how many grams of added sugar we're consuming. Um, I was meeting with an individual yesterday and he told me he only drinks a 16 ounce cheer wine. And I looked at the added sugar and I'm trying to remember what it was now. I think it was 64 grams of added sugar in one cheer wine. And he had no idea. So those are little things that we need to start paying attention to. Lastly, I know there's a lot of words on this slide. I'm not going to go into many of them, but I just want to point out that all of the words in that column on the far left side of your screen under chemicals, all of those are banned in another country somewhere else, but allowed in our food here in the United States. The FDA is pretty lax on what they allow food companies to put in our food. So unfortunately, what that means for us is we need to familiarize ourselves with some of these chemicals that are shown to cause negative side effects and be our own police men and women, because we need to flip over that nutrition label and go, oh my gosh, this has BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, shown to cause cancer in rats and affect our neurological system. I shouldn't be eating this, nor should I be feeding this to my kids. It lines a lot of cereal bags. So think about a cereal that comes in a bag in a box. Inside the, uh, the bag, a lot of times is this BHT that will keep that cereal good until the zombie apocalypse or you know whatever the crazy date is. That's a little uh, trick too. If, there, if the expiration date on something is 2035 or you know 2027, we should be raising an eyebrow like, why in the world is this gonna be good for the next six years here in my pantry? All right, what kind of chemical is in there? You guys will have access to these slides at the end of this. So we could, you can read this a little bit more, but I'm gonna keep it moving. All right, so what in the world can we eat? And I love this quote by Charles Poliquin. He was a famous strength and conditioning coach and nutritionist for some NBA and NFL all-stars, and he kept it super simple. So he said, if it doesn't swim, run, or fly, or isn't green and grow in the ground, don't eat it. And basically what he's saying is that the earth is going to provide us exactly what we were biologically designed to eat. All right, so we weren't biologically designed to eat Oreos or goldfish or Cheez-Its. All right, those are processed foods made in a factory. We were biologically to eat foods that don't have an ingredient list. Think about broccoli. What's in broccoli? Broccoli. What's in an apple? Apple. What's in chicken? Hopefully just chicken. All right, so those are the things we were biologically designed to eat. So we need to be getting the majority of our calories from those types of food. Where do we find these real foods? No matter where you grocery shop, pretty much every grocery store is set up the same. So whether it's Walmart, Trader Joe's, here we have Hair Cedar and Kroger, they're all set up the same. Around the outside, we've got your fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, we've got meat, eggs, dairy products, all of that will be around the outside. And then we've got the processed stuff down the aisles in the middle. So if you come home and you put the majority of your groceries that you just bought in your pantry, you were doing your grocery sh store shopping wrong, all right? When you come home with your groceries, the majority of your groceries should go in the fridge, okay? Of course, there's exceptions to every rule. We've got aisle exceptions, nuts, trail mix. You can find that in the aisles. Pro tip, your nuts, you wanna try and buy them raw if you can with no added, uh, salt isn't the problem. It's the oil that they use to get the salt to stick. So a lot of times they use like cottonseed oil or peanut oil or soybean oil to get the salt to stick. And those are the oils that are inflammatory. So if you can buy the raw nuts from the baking aisle, they're a lot cheaper and they're raw and better for you. Kind bars, layer bars, more on bars later. Nut butter, so that's peanut butter, uh, almond butter, cashew butter, all those are great. Olive oil, balsamic vinegar, brown rice pasta. You guys can read these. One thing about granola, um, People think that that's a buzzword for a health food, but they're packing in the sugar these days into granola. So be careful, try and find one that has less than 10 grams of added sugar per serving, All right? Okay, say you are in the grocery store, uh, you are Tim's wife and she's walking down the aisle and Tim's pushing the buggy behind her and <laughs> she's taking her sweet time trying to read these nutrition labels. Hopefully this is what she's looking at. 
I want to retrain for many of us, females, especially that have been trained to look at this in a certain way. I want to retrain everybody's eye on what we should actually be paying attention to. All right. Everybody recognizes this. Probably this is a brown sugar cinnamon pop tart box. All right. Found in the aisle of a grocery store. Uh, me as a female 10 years ago, I'd walk on the aisle, flip it over and see 210 calories and think, oh, that's not too bad. Maybe throw it in my cart. All right. You can see, I don't even have an arrow pointing to the calories. That's one of the least important numbers on here. Or, or words on here, um, you can see the first arrow is pointing to the serving size. And the reason that is, is because the rest of this information on the nutrition facts label is based off of one pastry. It's based off of that serving size. Pop-Tarts are very confusing because they're packaged in packages of two. You can't reseal the bag. Makes you think, well, I should eat two. That's what they're promoting, right? If you were like me, every day, fourth grade started with two brown sugar cinnamon Pop-Tarts. So for um, if that were the case for me, I would have to double all of this information because I'm eating two pastries, all right? So first thing, just recognize the serving size. That doesn't mean that's exactly what you need to eat. Everybody has different caloric needs. All right, the second area you can see is pointed towards the saturated fat line. For a long time, saturated fat was demonized. It was uh, thought to lead to cardiovascular disease and heart attack and high cholesterol. That's been disproven. We need saturated and unsaturated fats, okay? Trans fats. Trans fats were the bad ones. They actually became illegal in 2015 because they were so detrimental to our health. Uh, they gave food companies three years to get the trans fats out. So you shouldn't have to worry about this, but there's an arrow just to make sure uh, we want to we want to avoid those at all costs. Okay. Sugars. Uh, you'll notice there's 16 grams of sugar, again, in one Pop-Tart. So for me, before fourth grade every day, my poor fourth grade teacher was getting me after getting hopped up on 32 grams of sugar. All right, remember the World Health Organization recommends no more than 25 per day. The American Heart Association is a little bit stricter for women. They say 20 for women and a little bit more lax for men. They say 36 for men. All right, so back before fourth grade every day, I was getting way more than my total sugar for the day. And this is how sneaky sugar is. It's in everything and it's in greater quantities than we probably realize. Now let's zoom in on the ingredients. All right, many of you probably know the ingredients are listed in order of abundance. So that means the very first ingredient is the most abundant ingredient in that product. So for a Pop-Tart, we've got enriched flour as the first ingredient. Then we've got the second, fourth, and sixth most abundant ingredient in a Pop-Tart are different names for sugar, brown sugar, corn syrup, and high fructose corn syrup. And the reason they do that, they break it up and they pull a little bit from brown sugar, a little bit from corn syrup, and a little bit from high fructose corn syrup is because if they picked one, maybe they pulled all the sugar from high fructose corn syrup. That would end up being the most abundant ingredient in a Pop-Tart and have to be listed first. Okay. So for the moms, like Tim's wife, walking down the aisle of the grocery store, she might flip over that Pop-Tart box, know that the ingredients are listed in order of abundance, see high fructose corn syrup listed first, and think to herself, oh my gosh, I can't feed my kids this. It's mostly sugar. So they pull a little bit from brown sugar, a little bit from corn syrup, and a little bit from high fructose corn syrup. So to try and dupe us, right? And so now you guys are informed consumers, you know their trick and you can look for it. You can also just check how many grams of added sugar are in the new nutrition label, which is, we'll get to on the next slide. Come down a little bit further. We got TVHQ. It's a form of butane used to preserve the shelf life and processed foods. The FDA knows it's not great for us and they only allow food companies to comprise 0.02% of their products from TVHQ. But again, me, Fourth grade, double Pop-Tarts, double my dose of TBHQ. Side effects, we've got nausea, delirium, delirium, vomiting, and asthma. We've got an asthma epidemic going on in our youth today. And I fully believe we can attribute that to the foods, the processed foods that we're feeding our kids. Super sad. Come down to caramel color. It's linked to lung cancer in rats. And it's on California's list of poten potentially toxic chemicals. It's in things like uh, all dark colored soda or is colored with caramel color. Uh, it's in balsamic vinegar a lot of times, unfortunately, um, but it, it's a very, like I was, um, I went to drink emergency last week and there's caramel color in emergency. It's not even anywhere close to brown. It's like this pink color. I was so disappointed. So we want to be sure that we're paying attention to the ingredients that we're feeding, not only ourselves, but our little ones.
Okay, January 1st, 2020, last year, we got a new nutrition label. Many of you might be familiar with this. I want to point out a couple of things that are different. So the very first thing, the calories got bigger. We don't care again so much about that. But if you work your way down to that sugar line previously on a new, on an old nutrition label, they would just tell us how many grams of total sugar are in a product. They didn't tell us how many were added and how many were from natural sources. So there's natural sugar found in things like fruit and things like dairy. There's lactose. That's a natural sugar. And so let's pretend this product, the nutrition fact label on the right, let's pretend that's a yogurt. All right. So for any of you who have ever had a plain yogurt, not sweetened with anything, it's not great. Okay. And the dairy companies know that. And so they dump in some additional sugar to make it more palatable and make you come back to continue buying it. So for this, this yogurt, total sugars, they've got 12 grams. And then they tell you of those 12, 10 of which were added to the product to make it taste better. So that means two were occurring naturally and 10 were added. That line where it says includes 10 grams of added sugar, that's what we want to add up throughout the day to try and stay underneath 25. All right, so whatever this product is, this yogurt, it's 10 grams towards my 25 for the day. Okay, now for all you math wizards on here, this 20% right here, this percent daily value column, this is trying to tell us that 10 grams of added sugar is 20% of what's recommended for the entire day. All right, knowing what we know from the World Health Organization, they say no more than 25. The American Heart Association says 20 for women, 36 for men. Uh, all of you who can do math way quicker than I can know that 10 grams is not 20% of 25, right? So what happened was back in 1990, when this original nutrition facts label came out, you can see there's no percent daily value here across from sugar. And there originally was when they proposed a nutrition facts label, but the sugar lobbyists came in and said, no, 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 no. We can't have people knowing that a Pop-Tart is merely 100% of your sugar for the day. That would not be a good look. So they paid somebody and they got that percent daily value off. Okay. Now, fast forward 30 years, we have a percent daily value on there. The sugar lobbyists, they lost that battle, but they won in a sense because they convinced the FDA to say, to tell all Americans that 50 grams of added sugar or less is okay. So that's what they're basing that number off of, 50 grams. So you now, again, as an informed consumer, know that this number is incorrect and all we need to do is double it to know if that, if that is um, what, what percent of our daily sugar it is for the day. So whatever this product is, is technically 40 gram or 40% of our total sugar for the day, okay? All right, let's get into some practical tips for eating. What can you actually eat throughout the day that's made up of mostly these whole foods with very limited ingredients? So healthy breakfast ideas, we've got eggs, any way you want them, eat the whole egg, not just the egg white. I know we went through this phase where we thought the yolk led to, because it's cholesterol, dietary cholesterol actually doesn't raise your blood level cholesterol. So eat the whole egg. If you can find free range eggs, that's the best kind. Greek yogurt and fruit, overnight oats, oatmeal, crustless quiche, smoothie, acai bowls, and leftovers. So for, you know, a lot of us, we think of breakfast foods have to come from the breakfast food category. You can eat steak and broccoli for breakfast and your body will love it and appreciate it just the same uh, in the morning as it does at night. Healthy lunch ideas. Think about anything in a bowl. So maybe it's a bed of lettuce. Maybe it's on a bed of brown rice. Maybe it's on a bed of quinoa and then put some more veggies put some meat on there put a healthy dressing on there primal kitchen is a really good uh, dressing has a dressing line of every kind of dressing you can think of made with healthy oils ezekiel bread sandwich for my sandwich lovers try ezekiel bread you can find it in the freezer section at any grocery store almond flour wrap almond flour wraps are a little bit harder to find you can find them on amazon but you can also find them at health specific health food stores uh, leftovers or soup and salad, all great lunch ideas. Dinner ideas, think about a meat, a veggie, and a complex carb. So steak and broccoli and brown rice or chicken and asparagus and a sweet potato, sweet potato fries. We do them in the air fryer every day. It seems like chili, a bunless burger. So if you're craving a burger, get it. I get it all the time when I go out to eat, but I'll, and I'll do bacon and an egg and avocado on it and ask for a lettuce bun or just no bun at all. And then get a side salad or sweet potato fries. Breakfast for dinner. If you're a pasta person, you can sub your noodles for spaghetti squash or for brown rice pasta. 
Brown rice pasta, the only ingredients are brown rice and water. That's what makes it so great. And it's a complex carb versus a simple carb that's going to break down quickly and spike that blood sugar. Healthy snack ideas. Here's some more bars for you. If you're a bar person, I always tell people leave the house with a healthy snack. If you leave the house with no food, the way the world is set up today, you have very limited options for healthy food. Once you leave your house, you have to go out of your way to find something healthy versus unhealthy is at your fingertips at every convenience store on every corner with fast food, etc. So grab an RX bar on your way out of the door or a kind bar or some beef jerky an epic bar fruit and nut butter that takes a little bit more time, but maybe it's a handful of nuts, protein shake, Greek yogurt, vegan bar, cliff way bar, rice cake with nut butter. If you're unfamiliar with a rice cake, it's like um, popcorn and a packed into a pancake and you can put some nut butter on it. Trail mix, just try and get trail mix. It's not just chocolate chips and raisins. I get some nuts in there too. All right. And I want to show you guys some healthier versions of your favorite comfort food. So we think about healthy eating and sometimes all we can think about is nasty stuff, right? Or it just, it has to taste bad. If it's healthy, then there's no way it tastes good. And that does not have to be true at all. So these are some of my personal favorites, fried chicken. We do this once a week. We fry our own chicken tenders. We bread them in um, put it in the egg first, and then we do a combination of almond flour and coconut flour. You can pan fry it in avocado oil or use an air fryer. I have recipe links for all of these. If you guys are interested, please just email on me at the end. I'm happy to share. Lasagna. I did this two days ago. Instead of using noodles, I just use really thinly sliced sweet potatoes. I have a mandolin and it makes it really easy, but you can just cut them thinly. Don't cut your fingers off. Um, and you use those instead of traditional pasta. Birch, Bender's, Paleo, Pancake, and Waffle Mix. It's better than Bisquick. Everybody go buy it. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it at Walmart. Any grocery store pretty much has it now. Um, it's a much healthier pancake and waffle mix. You can make these waffles and then make that fried chicken and you have a much healthier version of chicken and waffles. Jambalaya. So for a healthier version of jambalaya, everything in jambalaya is actually pretty healthy, but you can make it a smidge healthier by using black rice or cauliflower rice for an even lower carb option. And then just make sure you cook everything in a healthy oil like avocado oil. Homemade bread and buns. I'm actually looking at my snack right now. I'll show you guys this. So I made these last night. These are these are the same buns. That, that picture looks a lot better than mine, um, but they're made from almond flour and tapioca flour. I made sloppy joes last night. It was so good. And these healthy buns, they don't have to rise for 24 hours with the yeast and all that. They have very simple ingredients. They take 15 minutes. Um, and then I have a bunch of buns left over. So this will be my snack. As soon as I'm done with this, this is peanut butter banana on one of these almond flour buns. And it's really good. Pasta, I touched on this earlier, swap your white or wheat pasta for brown rice or quinoa pasta or even spaghetti squash. And it'll just help bring the carb content down, make you not feel so sluggish and tired after your meal. And barbecue. So when you're making your own barbecue, if you can opt for the Primal Kitchen barbecue sauce, that's that line of salad dressings I mentioned a second ago, or I actually make my own. I make it with dates, balsamic vinegar, coconut aminos, which is very similar to soy sauce, a couple other ingredients. It's super easy. Um, but the amount of sugar that's in a traditional store-bought barbecue sauce is crazy. Sweet Baby Rice has 16 grams of added sugar per serving. Nobody uses one serving. So you're getting basically your day's worth of sugar or more just from barbecue sauce. So we can find, if we can find a healthier alternative, that'll make barbecue actually a decently healthy food. Okay, in summary, we've got minimize the sugar content. I know I beat that to a dead, uh, beat that to a pulp with saying that, but it's so important. We've got diabetes on the rise. It's estimated by 2050, we'll have half the country as type two diabetics. So we really need to get a handle on our sugar consumption. Eat real food, things that don't have an ingredient list. Read the ingredients if they do have an ingredient list and try and keep it to ingredient lists that are really short and ingredients that you can pronounce plan ahead and keep your shopping and your money spent around the edges of the grocery store. And with that, I'll leave you with my email address. That's my personal cell phone number. You guys are welcome to call me, text me, email me. If you're in the grocery store and you have a question, I'd love to hear from you. I know that sounds crazy, but it really does make my day when I can help someone make their grocery store experience a little bit easier and encourage them to choose a healthier food. That's my email if you guys are interested and I do individual nutrition coaching on the side as well, or just have one quick personal question or want these slides, happy to answer anything uh, you guys need. Great. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, Tim and Chris, if you want to pop on, I know um, 
I only see four questions so far. I know we probably each have a couple of our own. I'll go ahead and uh, hit one or two of these and Chris and Tim, feel free to jump in. One question was PB2 versus peanut butter. Thoughts on that? Peanut butter. Peanut butter all day long. Um, you want the healthy fat that comes with the peanut butter, but just don't get caught up in the Jif or the Skippies or buy something that's natural that has peanuts. The ingredients should say peanuts or peanuts and salt. I buy one from Trader Joe's that has peanuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, and one other thing, but there's no sugar or oil in it, but go for the real stuff. Okay. And somebody asked about getting copies of the slides. Uh, Tim, Chris, and I will get a copy of the deck and uh, feel free to email us individually. We'll make sure you get that. Plus there'll be a replay of this, uh, of this as well in the next week. Um, I'll ask one more and then Tim and Chris, you can ask some. Um, thoughts on fermented foods. Kimchi, I don't know if that means kombucha. That, I don't know what kimchi is, but kimchi, probiotics, kraut, et cetera. And what about MCT oil? And then I'll add to that kombucha for my sake, if that's not what that means, if that's in that same way. Uh, probiotic uh, foods that are naturally fermented are fantastic for you. So they are good sources of probiotics. Probiotics uh, feed the good bacteria in our gut. So our gut health is incredibly important. We can do a whole nother presentation on gut health and why we all need to improve it. Um, but probiotics, so eating foods like for, that are fermented, kimchi, um, sauerkraut. Kimchi is on Asian food. It's pickled, um, like uh, it's kind of spicy, cabbage, carrots. They do some other different things, but kombucha is another fermented food. Um, all of those are yogurt is a fermented food, have good probiotics. And then MCT oil, yes, fantastic. Put it in your smoothie, put it in your coffee, whatever. Yeah. Nice. So there's another question we have as well. Are you, somebody asked uh, as well, are you familiar with pancake pancakes? Ham cake? P A M C A K E. Yeah. Uh -uh, I'm not. Okay. Um, that was one. But I can look it up. Yeah. Is, no problem. Is uh, uh, enough? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So another one as well. Uh, a question for myself or from a, a few others was: If you go to Whole Foods and you buy Step Four meats, even bacon and other things, do those tend to be uh, the kind of meats you're looking at, or is there a certain place you typically go for the meats? Obviously grass-fed, but are there is there a better location than another to shop for that? Um, Whole Foods is great. They have a great selection of meat. I personally don't go to Whole Foods. Um, one day I'd like to financially get all my meat from Whole Foods um, or financially be at a place where I could. Uh, but I just look for the words. So if you're buying chicken, poultry, you want the words free range and organic yep. on there. If you're buying grass fed or um, if you're buying beef, you want grass fed, 100% grass fed beef. If you're buying eggs, you want the free range eggs. So those are different words that you can look for at whatever grocery store you're buying your meat and eggs from. Hey, awesome. Michelle, this has been really, really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, there's a question here and my wife is actually from Europe and the difference between what's allowed in the US and not, you know, not allowed in Europe. I mean, you, even, even Coke and Diet Coke taste different mm -hmm. over there, I've noticed. Um, and I think the answer is probably money. Um, but it's, the, the question is really why is there's so much more sugar and processed in our, you know, within our borders? Uh, the, the processed foods companies have a lot of power. Yeah, they pay, they pay people, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Europe, they're a lot more strict over there. If you look at the ingredient list on Doritos in Europe versus Doritos here, it's crazy like even just if you're just looking at length it's like this to this um it's cheaper here for for product like in, like why would doritos not just produce the same doritos around the world right um because the doritos that they produce here they can produce for cheaper with the chemicals like i'll give you the example of craft macaroni and cheese a couple years ago there was a petition started by a lady here she calls herself the food babe she's from charlotte um, and there was yellow dye in Kraft macaroni and cheese, which has been shown to have some side effects um, with attention deficit disorder uh, or cause attention deficit disorder. And in Europe, if you have a dye in your food, you have to put a big warning label on the front contains yellow five or something like that. And so Kraft macaroni and cheese, they didn't want to do that. And so they just took it out and they replaced it with paprika. Okay. So to keep the color, but paprika is a little bit more expensive than yellow dye. 
Um, so here in the United States, because we don't have any rules or regulations on that, they continue to use the yellow dye for our, our macaroni and cheese. So she started this petition to get the Kraft macaroni and cheese to pull the yellow dye out, and she did. She won. And so now you will find it with paprika versus the dye. Not that macaroni and cheese is a healthy food by any means, but at least I guess it's a step in the right direction. Right, right. And, it, and the preservatives, I know the culture in Europe is going to the grocery store more than once a week, probably. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. like the refrigerators daily. are smaller, the, everything's smaller. So um, yeah. another question, it looks from my office, my son is an athlete and needs a higher calorie diet. What would be some high calorie healthy foods that he could eat? Um, good question. So I, I don't know if he's on the weight gain train or what, but if he's, if he is, um, things like that, Ezekiel bread that I mentioned prior, that's a really great source of complex carbs for someone like him. If he wants to do, I tell people the athletes that I'm working with that are trying to gain weight, do a peanut butter, banana sandwich at night on Ezekiel bread. That's a little trick that'll help them. Um, any kind of protein from meat is going to be great for him. Brown rice pasta. So he still does need a lot of carbs, but that doesn't give him a free pass to just eat whatever he wants and from any carb source that he wants. So that Ezekiel bread, that brown rice pasta, rice cakes, the brown rice cakes, things that are carb dense and healthy fats. So peanut butter, almond butter, lots of nuts are, would be great for him and making sure he's getting enough protein from meat sources if he's a meat eater. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hey Tim, you could also look at the Bryson DeChambeau um, diet plan, which he's gained like 40 pounds of muscle in the past six months. I'm just kidding about that. If anybody's a golfer, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Somebody is. already asked this, but there's a question that goes along with this. Uh, and my 12 year old daughter asked me the other day, she pulled out the olive oil and said, can I just drink this? Is this good for me? So we have a, a somebody who asked a question, is olive oil good or bad? Uh, olive oil is great. Um, the confusion that's coming with olive oil now is that we figured out at high temperatures, it loses some of its nutritional value. So olive oil is for things like salad dressings, or if you want to dip your food in it. But if you want to cook or coat a pan, we want things like avocado oil, coconut oil, butter, or that ghee. Those are better options um, compared to olive oil. Awesome. Another question along the lines too is so if you're eating fish, fish is a big uh, item. You got Atlantic salmon, you got cold water salmon, you've got mackerel. Is it true that high fatty fishes are better for your probably for your brain or your digestion system as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The higher the fat content, the better for your body, better for your brain. Try uh, fish is another one. When we're buying fish, we want to try and get the wild caught fish when possible. I know there's the issue with the mercury content, but there are way bigger things that we need to worry about. If you've got 100% of your nutrition dialed in, then we can talk about the mercury content of fish. Until then, we can probably focus on other areas. Hey, um, Michelle, so somebody asked, if you don't eat dairy, what are the best alternatives for cheese and recipes? I know that's something, I, I, I love cheese and I struggle with that. And I've recently started buying like the um, cashew kind of cheese dips, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And um, trying to look at the ingredients on those, but what would be some alternatives for cheese? Yeah, trying to find the nut-based ones versus the soy-based ones are, are gonna be your better alternatives. I have an almond cheese that's in our pantry or in our fridge right now. Um, a lot of times I'll use an egg if you wanna do cheese, like I love cheesy broccoli growing up and that was the only way I could eat broccoli. So sometimes I'll fry an egg over easy and then put it on vegetables and it feels cheesy. Um, for that lasagna that I do with the sweet potatoes, uh, typically lasagna would have ricotta cheese, right? Um, you actually scramble eggs and every layer. So I go sweet potatoes, the meat and sauce, and then some egg that I've kind of scrambled. Is this raw? And then you do the same layer again, you do it on the top and it ends up coming out just like ricotta cheese. So I've fed it to people and they don't know the difference. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fabulous. Somebody asked. So this Go ahead, David. I was just going to say this a quick question. Somebody asked, do these guidelines change as we age? And I think uh, it's a client of mine. I think she means all of these guidelines just in general. Um, not necessarily the types of foods that you're eating. If you're a female and you're going through menopause, something like that, that could impact. We need a little bit more fat, a little less carbs. Um, as we age, that, that's kind of the general rule. You need more healthy fats and less carbs. Pretty much everybody in America could really benefit from that, though, as well. Um, as far as the types of foods that we need to be eating, always just whole food sources. So uh, we do have a question as well was, what is your opinion on intermittent fasting? 
That's a big trend today. How much time does everybody have? Oh, several days. I mean, we got the rest <laughs> of our lives here. I mean, come on. Just... Okay. Um, intermittent fasting is great. We could do a whole presentation on it. Uh, whether you're doing time-restricted feeding, which is where you fast for 16 hours a day and you eat all your calories in an eight-hour window, that's great. Just make sure you're getting all your calories in. If you're doing like a fasting mimicking diet where you're eating low calorie for a number of days in a row, um, that can be really great. They do different things. So if you're on a weight loss journey, that's a, one type of fasting. If you're just fasting for longevity and cellular autophagy and just trying to live a healthier life, that's a different type of fasting but it's great. We'll just leave it at that. How about that? Awesome. Okay. So there's a new pasta alternatives, which are hearts of palm pasta or a new one called pasta zero. It's called shirataki. Are those reasonable? Or is a, I know heart of palm sometimes has had some questions about it. If you're familiar um, with those. I don't know about the heart of palm. That's okay. one I can look up. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one that's like a low carb pasta noodle. It's white. I don't know if it's called did you say shiitake that's a mushroom um i'll have to look up the name of that low carb pasta but it's yeah. super simple ingredients it only has like three things in it and it might be what that person is asking about if, if that's the case yes if it's a yeah. long white and low carb option yes it's good awesome this is kind of an interesting one this one actually comes from a, a long time uh, client of mine my mother who, who actually is the reason that i'm here so celebrating national women's month we can ask us recommendations for starting if a pantry is full of less healthy stuff so you, you know, we've got a great point and we want to be healthy, but if we got all this stuff, literally should we just throw it out? What's your recommendation for, because you know, sugar is extremely addictive. So I guess the question has two points. What should we do if we've got a pantry full of crap? Yeah, that's a, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be. Dad. See, my dad's on here as well and he has the, the same predicament. So this is okay. your mom yeah. and my dad. Uh, yep. Depending on the kind of person you are, some people like to cold turkey at it and they will literally bring me into their house and we will chuck everything that shouldn't be there. And when that process is happening, I will show them why. We flip over the box and I say, here, this is why due to these ingredients, due to this amount of sugar, due to these processed oils, this has to go. And it's a good learning opportunity for them. Um, but some people, they would rather go more slowly. And as they finish the last sleeve of Oreos, then they just don't replace those Oreos with any more Oreos. You guys can do it however you want. I tell people all the time, they'll have a protein powder and I'll recommend a different one. Just finish out what you got and then replace with healthier stuff. The way that the food industry is going right now, I think they're really figuring out that people are trying to get healthier. And so there are some easy one for one substitutes. Like if you're a cracker person, if you haven't seen the Simple Mills almond flour crackers yet, that would be a great alternative for your Ritz crackers and cheese. If you like that at night, a lot of people like to kind of snack on something while they're cooking dinner. That's an easy alternative. Um, things like the Primal Kitchen salad dressings and they have mayonnaise, they have uh, pasta sauces, all of those are they have ketchup, barbecue sauce, all those are great substitutes and taste very similar to what you're used to. So there's little tricks like that when we're, it's not saying you can never have a cracker again. You know, you don't, you, that's, not, that's not a life nobody wants to live. Um, so little hacks like that, hopefully. Yeah, it's, hopefully. Tessa Mays is another good brand like Primal, right? What's the, um, I think it's sunflower oil. Oh, really? On Tessa I know it's no added sugar, and I see that at Whole Foods next to the Primal all, all the time. And so yeah, um, hold on, I'm looking it up. Tess, um, T S S E E S S, then a bunch of other letters after that. I don't know. <laughs> um, -S -E -M -A -E -S, probably. Let's see. I can get back with you on that. I mean, I was just, I was just curious because I know that one has come up. Yeah. Guys, I think this is a pretty hot topic. I mean, we've never had so many questions just pour in. This is awesome. Yay, yeah, most, of from, most of them are from uh, most are from David himself, though. What's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the anonymous attendee on here. Yeah, here's the, here's another one of David's. What's the best way to kick the sugar habit? That's As you cool. said, it's I, I, guess I'll, 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 I have that question too. Um, yeah, for me, it was slowly over time. I couldn't do it cold turkey. Um, if you want to do a cold turkey, you're going to, it's a, it's a drug. It's addictive. Your body's going to go through the same withdrawal symptoms that you would experience if you were trying to kick a, a drug habit or alcohol, something like that. You'll get irritable. You get the shakes. You'll get a headache. Um, people talk about the keto flu. A lot of times that is coming from kicking the sugar addiction. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to do it that way. 
but just slowly over time, if you can start to just pay attention to how many grams of added sugar you're consuming, even if it's a hundred, if you have a hundred grams of sugar today, maybe tomorrow you only have 90 and maybe the whole rest of the week, you only have 90. And then the next week you're going to cut it back to 75. If we can just start paying attention. Um, I think that's the first thing. And then yeah, slowly, slowly pull back. So you don't shock your body, but if you like to cold turkey, that's fine too. Michelle, I also had another question. Uh, do you do personal nutrition coaching for individuals? I do, I do. Mm -hmm. You do? Okay, perfect. We could set something out like that. Since there's so many questions too, and you think there's other topics, we can also discuss maybe having something where we give you a topic that might be hot and we do you know some follow-up pieces too with that as well. It's, a, yeah, it's an idea. Yeah, um, some of the hottest ones right now are the gut. So I do a whole presentation yeah. on leaky gut and the importance of that. Um, key, the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting are, are the biggest things. So uh, if you guys are interested in that. Yes, somebody donate unwanted pantry food to a food bank yep. yeah. made. Um, give your unhealthy food to the homeless <laughs> <laughs> i do have conflicting feelings about that right. but. i do yeah. too want <laughs> <laughs> um, to be the trash cans okay in that case we uh i get this a lot and this from my dad as well but you know how eat and, and he's doing a lot better now but eating healthy you know it's expensive or of course whole foods is expensive but um, and my argument's always been, well, you're either going to pay it now at the grocery, you're going to pay it later with your health yeah. and your enjoyment of life or the doctor bills or prescriptions and all of that. Um, what would you add to that? Or what would you say to somebody that says it's too expensive? I'm just going to keep buying what I'm buying. Um, I would say that I've done the math on my husband and I's grocery bill and we eat for $5 a meal and we eat all whole foods. Um, we shop at Aldi. So if you guys have Aldi, it's super cheap. You can get vegetables for super cheap. You can buy free range chicken. You can buy grass fed beef. You can buy no sugar added bacon. Um, it is a little hit or miss, but they do have wild caught fish. Um, and the prices are just unbeatable. So uh, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. That. Are, you, are you employed by Aldi? Are you employed by Aldi? No, I'm just kidding. I, I think I'm they're... not. I'm not employed by Aldi. Um, also, we do a lot of stuff on Amazon. So I get almond flour uh, in five dollar. I mean, five pound bags. I get my tapioca flour in a four pound bag. Coconut flour in a four pound bag. So buying in bulk is another way to do it too, to make it uh, more affordable. You, you did. You mentioned yogurt. Um, mm -hmm. Coconut. So I see, like when you go to the Whole Foods and places, you see coconut yogurt, mm -hmm. Greek yogurt. And then sometimes 100% grass fed yogurt. Which one's better? What's the, I mean, what's the difference? Uh, it depends on if you tolerate dairy well or not. So for myself, no dairy. So actually, I don't do any yogurt. But if you want to do an almond one or a coconut one, just be careful of the amount of added sugar that's in there. If you tolerate dairy, fine. I tell people the triple zero black label Greek yogurt that's sweetened with stevia is one of your better options. Weight goes triple zero. So Greek has uh, dairy. Greek is dairy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, that's, cool. that's related. There's one about agave ketchup. Is agave better, better, I guess, sugar option? Still sugar, still going to impact your blood sugar. Uh, maybe a little bit less than traditional table sugar, but don't think about it like a calorie or a, like a free food that's, that's still healthy for you. It's still going to impact your blood sugar. Um, some sweeteners that won't are stevia. So coming from a plant, uh, you can buy the liquid stevia on Amazon. That's the one I think that tastes the least weird. And then monk fruit sweetener. So both of those are natural and they come from, uh, and they don't impact your blood sugar. I have a question just for myself. I was recently in a place uh, where I was able to eat at a fresh market, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, what about fast food? So a lot of time you don't have time to cook or whatever. And a lot of people are ordering out some of the guidelines, is there a fast food restaurant you think like Panera or something, or is it just making the same choices when you're ordering restaurant food as well? Yeah. I tell people Chipotle is a great one. Just go mm -hmm. build a bowl on a bed of brown rice. They now have cauliflower rice or on lettuce and then mm -hmm. pick a meat, pick some salsa. You really can't do too much damage to your body at a Chipotle. Even, even though at those places, the likelihood that it's grass fed and all that stuff is probably low, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, pro probably not, but there are worse choices to make when we're out and about. Yeah. I think Panera is actually non-antibiotic chicken and everything that they have as well. And that actually brings me to question. One, one person asked about chicken. There's thigh meat and rib meat in the bre chicken breast you buy sometimes. Is that all right? That's not a big deal. Yeah, chicken thighs are actually more nutrient dense than chicken breast. Cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do so you recommend a protein powder or any supplements that are, I mean, we don't have to go out to all the supplements. There's some protein powder. Do you think it's a good supplement for most people or? I mean, the supplements are a huge whole other topic we'll probably bring up another time, but is there a just simple protein powder you think is great? 
Um, earth fed muscle, if you're a whey based protein powder person is really great as four ingredients, sweetened with stevia, no extra crap. And then if you're a plant-based protein powder person, the Orgain protein powder, Vega or Sun Warrior are all really good options. We've had, um, God, there's so much here. This is awesome. We've had a couple people mention, asked if you could do another session on fasting. And then also we could, Chris mentioned one on supplements. I'm putting that a note. I definitely think we should do a follow-up with you um, and we can get together and schedule that. Cause I mean, there's stuff, there's still probably 10 more questions and um, it's a little after 12 um, central time. So I wonder, what do you think, Chris and Tim, do we kind of wrap up and hold some of these questions and do a follow-up like next month or something? Or what do y'all think? Yeah, let's do. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Let's do that. If, if you're willing to do it, Michelle, as well, I think it's a good idea to keep on the topic. If this is, it's generating a lot of questions with, it's great. We can even ask people ahead of time some of the questions so you can, you know, if there's something odd, like it's Tessa May dressing, somebody typed in, we'll, we'll actually uh, you know, let you know this. But I think it'd be great to do something on that maybe pre and probiotics, maybe a little bit on the gut, you know, mm -hmm. if you sense as well. Some of the things that are hot right now, because I know a lot of people ask about like the keto diet and the other, you know, exact diets that are going on. So if you find something that's hot too, maybe you can be our kind of, you know, our, our beacon for what we should also be talking about. Yeah, yeah we can. I, I've, I've done entire Q&A uh, webinars too. If you want to have people submit their questions early and we can just do a slide, another slide deck of all common questions and I can walk through that. I think, we do that. I think between what's here and what we can come up with and uh, soliciting questions before we'll have, we could do an entire hour on Q&A. So that'd be great. Yeah. So you, you said something once about an 80-20 rule. You said, what was that again? 80% 80, 80 good and then 20% you kind of have. That's right. Yeah, 80% of the time time. you're on the wagon, 20% of the time you eat whatever you want. And if you break that down, if you're a three meal a day kind of person, um, three meals a day, seven days a week. That gives you four meals a week to eat whatever you want, as long as you're not also having dessert and also having a million alcoholic drinks. Um, <laughs> we have to pick our 20 person. You know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I follow that 80 20 rule. And then we do a food log and it's like 50 50, and they're wondering why they're not feeling any better. So we have to be honest about our 80 20. 20% is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think somebody actually said, what is a, let's talk adult beverages. I knew it'd come up. Is it true tequila and sake are the healthiest options? That's sake. correct. Um, so there's the alcohol continuum. So if you've got like yeah. over here, you've got IPAs, like really heavy, and you've got the sugary um, daiquiris, things like that. And then we've got um, like white wine would be the next kind of sugary thing, light mm -hmm. beers. We've got red wine. As we're getting healthier, we've got red wine and liquors, uh, dark liquor, clear liquor, um, the seltzers and then tequila would be the least worst option. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Got it. That's great. great. This was, uh, yeah, this was great. Very helpful. We've never had so many questions. We've done a bunch of these webinars, so we really oh, okay. appreciate you. The um, Obviously the topic is there's a lot of people that are on this journey, um, mm -hmm. on this quest to, to find healthier so we appreciate it and we will get back with you and everybody we will again we're going to have this recorded we'll have the slides reach out to me tim and chris individually and also send specific questions and we'll go ahead and kind of log those for the upcoming webinar and get you an invite to that in the next month cool uh, that's all i have thank you michelle uh, chris and tim You're anything welcome. else um, I'm going to run. I'm going to go. I'm going to go buy a thousand shares of tequila really quick. And, and I can <laughs> yeah. hear the phone ringing. <laughs> nice We're job, Michelle. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for introducing us to Michelle. This has been super beneficial and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah. yeah, I echo Tim's words. I echo that, David, as well. And I think it's great to have the three groups get together when we find something that might be appealing to our clients. It's not just our clients. We're willing to share it. I think that's outstanding. So thank you for your expertise. Thank you for bringing this. Thank you for getting us together. And and really sharing topics that I think are really timeless for all of us. So we appreciate that. And I look forward to having more and more of these as our health and wellness continues. Because this member, it's not just about money. It's about life as well. So as we look at that, money supports everything we're talking about here. So we want to allow you to be able to shop at Aldi or Whole Foods. That's our goal. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. You're appreciate welcome. It. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.